Hello everyone and welcome to another Halu Sees It review. I'm closing out uh, Serlin Games Review Week. Uh, we've looked at Yomi and Flash Tool and Pandante. And now we get a look at my favorite out of all of Serlin Games, Puzzle Strike. Okay, this is a deck building game for two to four players. And uh, it's very unique in its element of deck building because in these games you will find no cards but you will find lots and lots of chips okay so coming back up here two different boxes uh, each of these games uh, is a standalone game you can play it by itself has all the components space components necessary to play puzzle strike and then each of these come with uh, 10 of the Fantasy Strike characters. Um, and so let's go ahead and take a look at what comes in the box. The boxes are fairly large, uh, really deep boxes, okay? And it is because you got lots and lots of good stuff here, okay? So um, we come over here. There is a total of 342 chips in each of these boxes. 342. You heard me correctly. Okay, so there is a ton of chips in this game. Um, the base components of the game, uh, I mentioned uh, they come with base components. Uh, each of the games comes with uh, four player mats, um, four player shields, um, which uh, I'll kind of talk about the quality of the components as I as I mention and could go through these okay so let's bend me back up just for a second okay 342 chips they all have the same feel okay they all have the same back um, and over here um, you'll have the different you know gems or puzzle uh, action type uh, chips uh, crash gems and things like that and we'll show you um, they're very very thick they have a really really nice feel to them they're nice and smooth and they're just very very good quality chips very very impressed with it and um, I think I probably would have been turned off to the game if these would have been you know poor quality but these are just really really high quality and they really need to be for this game because I mean that is the game is these chips uh, putting them in a bag shuffling them up you're drawing them you're buying them it's all based on these chips so um, you'll be happy to hear that the chip quality on these is 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 just amazing okay player boards also thick um, very very nice quality um, nothing too fancy there but the mats are fantastic as well um, because they're very very useful um, a lot of times some of the player mats and things they're just kind of a nicety um, but really this is I wouldn't I guess I wouldn't say it's necessary but it's it's pretty pretty nice to have and uh, I, you definitely, I wouldn't play without them. So um, what, what's on this mat is really nice. So it'll make more sense as we get into it. But uh, you have a gem pile section. We have a section for ongoing uh, effects uh, from uh, the different chips. We have a discard pile. And then down here on the bottom, uh, there's some reference to... Uh, part of the and not I guess they're part of the rules or instructions uh, just reminders uh, here you know the different phases that you go through and so we'll explain those a little bit more later but they're very useful um, the player shields um, are also very nice they're just a little cardboard you got a little uh, they fold up okay the artwork on the inside of these um, they have like little rule reminders, but they're different for each one, um, and just kind of fun little artwork. Okay, um, so 
the it's not really really beneficial it's just kind of fun artwork that they have on the inside of these um, they could have maybe added some other reference uh, you know other rule reminders um, I think on the inside of this especially uh, the panic time how the panic time works I really kind of wish they would have just included that on one of the sides of these panels but other than that uh, the shields are really great and it's really nice to have these okay because in a deck building game you have cards right and you can hold your cards uh, even if you're sitting next to your opponent like I have this set up now you can hold your cards you know kind of away from your opponent but that's even kind of hard to do with cards here it's really hard to hold you know five chips in your hand and try to see what you have and decide what you want to do so you have these little player shields that you would basically put your hand that you've drawn uh, behind your player shield okay and it's really nice because these player shields really you can be sitting you know pretty much right next to your opponent and with the player shields um, you can easily hide your hand so very very useful uh, player shields as well uh, everything in this game I think is just thought out really well okay um, you'll also have uh, four bags four cloth bags okay they're very I mean they aren't like you know velvet or anything but they are very nicely made um, haven't had any issues with these um, and I just they're really nice um, and with you know two sets here you have eight bags and uh, I kind of uh, have borrowed uh, two of the bags from one set because I can pull from the others uh, to use for my dice uh, dice masters because the bags that came with with that game was was awful but anyway um, the rule book okay let me show you just some of this rule book here move my player shield out of the way for a second uh, the rule book is fantastic too um, I just the little first part here the the whole idea I can explain just a little bit concept behind this game puzzle strike is you have these you know characters and they uh, their uh, character each of the characters have three uh, character uh, chips okay so each character has three chips and uh, that makes up your starting uh, starting deck and in the game what you're trying to do is uh, at the beginning of your turn you're going to be obtaining and getting uh, some of these one gems to start out with that are going to come into your uh, gem pile here okay and uh, as uh, the reminder here what happens is throughout the game you're going to be a uh, getting more gems in your gem pile and then trying to get those gems uh, combined into uh, larger gems like that um, and then you are going to be sending these over to your opponent trying to overwhelm them with gems in their gem pile uh, coming down here how the game ends is if you ever have more than 10 10 or more gems in your gem pile at the end of your turn then the game is over and you have lost and so in two player game boom the other player has won okay so that's the object of the game and the idea is is that this is really kind of like a a, a game that i used to play on yahoo games or a variant of tetris where you know two player tetris where if you clear lines then it sends blocks over to your opponent that's really kind of the concept here the idea is stacking you know things that you're doing well clearing your board moving it to your opponents so very very cool uh, thematically it works really well it feels like you're playing like a tetris type game like that a little puzzle game um, anyway the going back to the rules okay so the this rule book is just laid out very nicely okay so here um, the introduction here it basically gives you that rundown same rundown 
um, you're, you're trying to crash these gems is the terminology they use into your opponent's pile and you can crash a one gem that would go over there or in this case if you have a three gem and you crash that you're gonna split that up into three one gems over to your opponent's side okay and uh, anyway so we got a quick start rules uh, kind of a reminder there goes through as illustrations very nice setup with pictures of the uh, starting a uh, suggested starting bank of puzzle uh, puzzle chips and uh, that's really nice instead of just listing out okay you know combos are hard draw three there's actually a picture visual so that it helps you uh, find those more easily um, it lists all of the other ones here uh, for the setup of the game, very, very simple. Uh, everyone takes six one gems, a crash gem, and their three character chips as well. Uh, you put those into your bag, shuffle those up, and draw five, and the game begins. Um, the turn phases, uh, the gameplay in this game, uh, very, very simple. You're going to have an anti phase. Uh, an action phase, buy phase, and then a cleanup phase. And we'll go through those in more detail. Uh, this is the panic time thing that I was mentioning before. Um, I think the, the the one thing I wish they would have done is include you know, just a little reminder of how the panic times work on the inside of these uh, player uh, shields. But uh, it's, it's still fairly easy to remember. Um, but anyway just very very well done instruction booklet okay all right um, the box I got right here okay so the I have 10 of the uh, puzzle uh, chips out and so these are the the remainder 12 that I'm not using this game uh, there's this clear plastic insert and underneath you'll see my other bags and other player boards and shields uh, and the plastic insert does have labels on it for you know where things go so that's great two gems three gems etc I got the, the uh, character uh, chips go here and everything fits just really nicely you don't have to like force it down the only thing you have to consider is you know making sure that the stuff in the bottom is kind of centered before you try to put the insert back in but very very nice everything fits in there great so component wise I think just fantastic all right gameplay I I love deck building games and if you like deck building games and more are familiar with them um, I think you're already kind of a shoe in to enjoy this game. Um, I could be wrong, but uh, that's just my opinion. So, um, each player, I've already mentioned, will take six of these one gems, a crash gem, and their uh, character things here. Okay, and on your turn, um, so if you would shuffle these all together, but I'm just going to keep them out so I can show you what those would do. But at the start of your turn, what you would end up doing is you put one gem in your gem pile. Okay, that's the very, very first phase, the anti phase. And then we go to the action phase. So if I drew any chips, uh, again, for the beginning, you're going to draw five uh, chips. Um, and the only actions uh, that you have are these four here. So. Uh, the, in the action phase, you start with one action that you can perform. Okay, pretty straightforward. I can perform any one of these actions. So let's go over the crash gem because this is one of the more um, most important uh, in the game. So if uh, on my turn I drew this uh, for an action, I could play the crash gem. I play that out in front of me for the time being, and what that means is is that I'd be able to crash a gem and I would get plus one coin as well for crashing a gem. So at this point in time, I only have one gem here. I would choose one and then that gem would go over to my opponent unless he has some sort of uh, reaction or some way to stop that. Um, if he had a crash gem, his crash gem in his hand, he could 
play this, you'll see that there's actually this purple shield there. He would be able to uh, play that as well uh, if he had a uh, gem as well in his gem pile, then he would be able to counter that and send a gem flying my way. If, for example, it was further in the game, again, these tiles wouldn't be out here, but, uh, and he had a two and a crash gem to counter. Uh, again, I don't see what his hand is, but I see that he has a two here. If I crashed my one over here, what would happen is, is my one would come flying over this way, and his two, he would counter with his crash gem, uh, would be split up into two ones, okay, and go flying at me. So these two ones will crash into each other and basically become mute, okay? Nothing happens there, but his comes back over and lands in mine. So, um, I mean, I didn't, it didn't, you know, work out exactly as I wanted, uh, but uh, I still uh, only have one chip here, and then he has uh, gotten rid of uh, his two, so that was pretty beneficial for him. Okay, so that's how crashing works. You just take your gems, they're going to be flying over, the opponent may be able to counteract that. Okay, looking at some of the abilities here, um, I really, really like uh, Midori, I think is his name. Um, he has this little thing dra called Dragon Form in the different games. And so, for example, this is an ongoing one uh, that you see here. If I can get it to focus. Okay. Uh, anyway, each anti phase, uh, anti uh, gem of one higher than usual, or discard this chip. Uh, your purples can't be. Uh, uh, purple shield reacted to you and you can't buy purples okay so this is an ongoing thing uh, so that would go up in here to remind us that I have this ongoing feature and instead of anteing one I would go ahead and ante a two okay and that could be very very useful as you can see his uh, it's more powerful to crash higher gems um, and it has the uh, other things, or I could discard this chip if I didn't want to ante that, because there's a balance of getting higher gems here to crash over and being careful not to exceed the 10 total um, amount of uh, value, I guess, of the gems in your gem pile uh, so you don't lose the game. Okay, so that one's a really cool one. Um, really like that one a lot. Uh, purge bad habits. Uh, this one is you are going to uh, trash a chip. I apologize. This is not working for me today. Trash a, trash a chip from your hand and put a two gem from the bank into your hand. Character chips can't be trashed. That's just a little reminder there. Uh, this one here, a reaction. Uh, when an opponent buys a four or more cost chip, trash a non-purple chip from your hand, then gain a chip costing up to two more than the trash chip. So you got a little rigorous training, so you're able to do that. Um, looking at some of the other player uh, actions, uh, they'll make maybe a little more sense as we go through this. Um, but. Here we have uh, Loom, I believe his name is, but he's the Gambling Panda from Pandante. Um, living on the Edge, if your gem pile totals at least 10, you get to draw three extra chips. That's what that icon stands for. Three extra chips, and you get to play one action. The black action means that you can be any sort of action. I'll show you the different colors there. Um, but uh, you'll see the banners. These are brown actions. Um, there are brown actions. We have uh, brown actions up there. You'll notice that there's a blue action and some red actions, okay? And then the playing these purple ones, this is an action one, but it's a purple action. And the black means that you can play any of those. Uh, jackpot, reveal two chips at random uh, from a chosen opponent's hand. If any are gems, you get plus one 
uh, coin for your buy phase and plus another action. If both are purple, you uh, play and gain a purple from the bank. Uh, pretty powerful there. Panda's bargain ongoing at the end of your turn, or at the end of any turn, you bought a puzzle chip, you get to draw one. Uh, from your uh, bag and discard this when you buy a purple okay so the the character uh, actions in this is are really really cool and I love that comp that idea uh, in this uh, in this game because in other deck building games it's exactly the same right everyone starts with in Dominion or whatever the seven coppers and three estates um, this game everyone starts off with a different feel because they have character specific uh, chips so I love that um, yeah, just show you a little bit more here. This is one of my other favorite characters, um, and he has just again more of a uh, defensive thing going on. His ongoing special here, Bubble Shield, uh, negate a gem sent to you, then discard this chip. So you can have this ongoing until uh, you need it. Uh, you also have a reaction. Uh, become immune to a uh, basically red chip attack, which are attacks. Uh, protective Ward is ongoing as well, and players can't combine gems unless they discard a puzzle uh, a puzzle chip first, and then uh, you would have to you discard this at the end of your next action phase. But very very cool because. Uh, that's how you, your opponents can get you, is combining gems. And the thing I'll mention is if you, uh, you can combine any two gems, but it can't be uh, more than four. So you can't combine like a three and a three to make a six, because there isn't a six. The highest is a four. So you can combine a three and a one. If your opponent does that and then is able to crash that gem over, this is unblockable. You can't respond to it with this uh, purple shield and send something back to try to crash against it. Uh, you will still split it up into four ones and it'll those four ones will go directly over to your opponent. Can't block it. Okay, so anyway. Um, in the game, uh, the other tiles here, so I just mentioned, you know, the one was they couldn't combine. Well, that's this guy here, it cost four coins, okay? And uh, it allows you to combine those two. It uh, makes your uh, money for that buy phase, uh, takes it down by one, uh, but it does give you uh, another action. There are more uh, crash gems uh, that you can purchase here. And there is the uh, big honker here. It does cost nine, but the double crash gem. It allows you to crash two gems over. Very, very powerful. Plus, you can get up to two money. So if you crashed both of those gems, uh, then you would get two plus two for your buy phase. Okay. So after, you, after you've done any of these actions, and there's a bunch of actions in the center here, uh, you'll see uh, the icons. Uh, you'll draw, you know, draw one from your bag, another action, uh, more money. Uh, this one here is a piggy bank that basically allows you, sometimes you want to save a chip. It's not very beneficial to play this round. If you have a piggy bank that allows you to keep one of your chips um, for the next turn. So maybe you'll have this chip, save it, you'll draw four more to draw back up to five and maybe this will be more useful that next round. Um, let's see, that's just the basic idea. Like I said, there's different color actions. So this one here, if you trash a gem from your hand, you can perform uh, a, a brown action, a purple action, a red action, and a blue action. Uh, so there's the color of those actions is important. After you've performed an action, what you're gonna do next is you're gonna go into your buy phase. Now, if you have to buy at least one thing, and you aren't limited to one thing either, if you have, you know, uh, six uh, money, then you can buy three of these, you know, twos, uh, split up however you want, or you can buy, this combos are hard uh, for six. 
so that's biphase. And what's really interesting is if you uh, find yourself with no money and you don't even have a one gem to purchase another one gem, you are going to have to end up with a wound which costs zero, but this chip does nothing, just as it says, and it just fills up your hand with uselessness, and it gets really frustrating. So, anyway, that's that's a really really cool uh, component to this as well. Um, and then you do your cleanup phase. Anything that you've bought, you know, purchased will be in your discard. Anything you've used, action-wise, uh, goes in your discard, and then you draw up to five. Now this is a, a change here. So if you have some zero to two uh, uh, value of gems in here, so we have just one, so I draw back up to five. Uh, but if I have three to five, I would draw six. And so as you get closer and closer to 10, you draw, draw more chips so that uh, you have a better chance of, you know, coming back, so to speak. Um, it is a really, really nice way to balance the game. It's just, again, brilliant, I think. So that's kind of the basics here. I know I kind of rushed over a few things, but I really want to focus on, you know, kind of explaining what I liked about the game instead of giving a step-by-step -step on how to play the game. Um, the, let's see if I can uh, think here. Uh, what else? There's just, there's a lot of good strategy. Um... You can also play, I, I really like this as a two-player game, but you can also play like a free-for-all, or you can play two versus two, and so you have a lot of different options there as well, uh, but it's just really, really fun uh, deck-building game. Uh, the, the quality of the components top-notch, and it's different. It feels very different. You're not going for victory points or or whatever that way you it's very interactive with the players that's the other thing very interactive um you know sending chips back and forth is really how uh you know what you're doing and how you win the game um very cool mechanic down here and it's a fine line again of you know having chips in here to be able to send to other people but you really don't want to get too many chips because you get uh, 10 at the end of your turn, game over. So, very cool. I just want to quickly come over here, show you just a, a few of the other uh, actions and everything here that you can do, and some of the other characters are laid out from the uh, shadow uh, box. I don't know that I really have a preference uh, one way or the other as far as which one to get, um, but the, uh, you know, some of my, all, I think pretty much most of my, my favorite characters are in the first one, uh, so the ones that I highlighted, but uh, this one here also really has some, some great, great uh, tiles here. Uh, this character is always interesting, can't remember his name uh, right now, but he's always kind of, uh, you know, hurting himself in a way to uh, make himself more powerful in some of the regards. Um, like, uh, it's, uh, whenever you discard this chip, you gain a wound. Okay? Action, discard this without gaining a wound. So, that's the Shadow Plague. So, he basically has to discard it. Uh, I mean, use an action to discard this, or else he's going to gain a wound. Um, so anyway, it, it's very interesting, um, very, very different style on all of these. Um, you have the little robot character, um, uh, the, uh, Death Strike Dragon. This one's pretty cool. You have, uh, you basically, you trash all of your, uh, number ones from your pile, which sometimes you'll have a ton. And you would send half of those rounded down to an opponent, and then you trash the ship. So one of the few character chips that would actually be removed, but very powerful. Um, the giant growth. During your active phase, you may put a gem from your hand into your gem pile and discard this when you buy a uh, purple. So you have an ongoing thing there. Um, 
very, very cool. Uh, just so many different possibilities. It plays really well. My only, one of my only things that uh, I struggle with, uh, with Puzzle Strike, is sometimes the games can get a little long. Um, you're going back and forth, back and forth. You know, I got eight, and you have like four, and then you have eight the next turn because I sent over, you know, a four gem, and then, you know, you send it. There's there's a lot of back and forth there, and it's it's fun. I enjoy this game a lot. But then uh, there are games that seem to draw out a little bit. And there is a little mechanic in here, and, and that's the panic time that I mentioned, uh, that uh, helps with that. Uh, but it, it still makes it a little, especially if you have characters that put, are able to kind of upgrade things, and uh, you have gems, or sorry, sorry gems, uh, puzzle pieces going back, because what happens is, as you get rid of, as these uh, piles get purchased, say this one, you know, all of those tiles were purchased, you're going to get rid of piles, and as you get rid of piles, what happens is, is you get into panic time, danger time, deadly time, and as those piles disappear, instead of putting a one gem into your thing, into your gem pile, at the beginning of your turn, you're going to add to a two gem. So, you know, you're going to increase uh, your gem pile amount at the beginning of your turn. And it works really, really well, like I said, but if you have those those games where you're like upgrading tiles with like the robot character in the shadows, um, you know, then, you know, someone upgrades it and there's, you know, that pile's not gone uh, anymore. And so it goes back. And so that game, and maybe it was just that character, um, but uh, the game can be a little bit long. Uh, drawn out uh, occasionally, but uh, I like the game so much that I, I I really don't mind that. So that's something to watch out for. But I'm really I'm giving this a 10 out of 10. Uh, this is is my favorite Sterling games. Uh, definitely have enjoyed uh, reviewing the games this week, and uh, highly recommend uh, you check them out. If you haven't had a chance to play them, you can check out FantasyStrike.com. Uh, play them online for free uh, and if you enjoy them there uh, you'd be able to purchase them so um, again I got these games for free to review these I'm not trying to you know endorse you know, uh, you know the games but I'm just letting you know what I think of them and I really really enjoy those games a lot and Puzzle Strike uh, primarily um, so Go ahead and check them out, and uh, Pandante Expansion Light and Dark is currently on Kickstarter, um, and it looks like a really nice upgrade uh, expansion to Pandante. Uh, really good chance to get in on that, so check it out. Again, thanks for uh, looking and uh, uh, commenting and, and you know giving a thumbs up on these videos. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you around.